The death of King Yasuvarman in 910 marks the beginning of a period of instability. For the next 18 years, his two sons will successfully fight for power against their uncle, Jayavarman IV, who in the end will emerge as sole ruler. The first of the brothers was Harshavarman. He ruled until his death in 923, and the only thing we know about him is that he built the temple mountain of Baxi Cham Krong, dedicated to his parents. In 921, Jayavarman was driven out of Angkor and established his own capital at Kokir. An inscription dated to that same year states, quote, Jayavarman IV left the city of Yashadarapura to reign at Chok Gargar, his new city's original name, taking the Devaraja with him. Within just 20 years it had grown into a magnificent city, with the walls encircling an area of 1200 square meters and temples scattered on the surrounding 35 square kilometers. It also included a fairly large beret or water reservoir, as well as a 30 meter tall pyramid said to have contained a colossal, probably metal cased linga measuring 5 meters tall. Nowadays, the city lies in ruins, in an area of sparsely populated jungle in northern Cambodia. Back at Angkor, Harshavarman was succeeded by Ishanavarman II. Just like with his brother, all we know about Ishanavarman's reign is that he constructed a temple, in this case that of Prasad Kravan, dedicated to Vishnu. He died in 928, leaving the entirety of the realm in the hands of Jayavarman IV. It's noteworthy that although his royal connection was through his mother to King Indravarman I, as well as through his marriage to the half-sister of King Yasavarman, there doesn't seem to have been any clear rules of succession, meaning that his claim to the throne may well have been valid. Remaining at his capital of Chok Gargar, he in turn reigned until 941.